good day. I'm Theodore Henry, and this is your GIS News for Friday, May 19, 2023. Jamaica's aviation traffic has rebounded to 6 million passengers, or 91% of pre-COVID-19 levels. Minister of Transport and Mining Audley Shaw made the disclosure during his recent contribution to the 2023-2024 sectoral debate in Parliament. Pointing out that Jamaica's aviation traffic fell by 2.2 million passengers in 2020, Minister Shaw reveals that the global air traffic recovery rate as of December 2022 is 72% as published by the Airports Council International. As I indicated, this remarkable recovery has taken place halfway through the projected six years. This honorable house should note Jamaica also matches stride with Latin America and the Caribbean region as the world leader in air traffic recovery. Touching on another aviation matter, the transport minister says government will be addressing congestion issues at the Sangster International Airport. As an immediate measure, to ameliorate the prevailing issues. 15 additional automated border control kiosks are being procured through the Airport Improvement Fund. Jamaica and Dubai are set to embark on a partnership for tourism development focusing on several strategic targets. Portfolio Minister Edmund Bartlett says the collaboration is the result of discussions from a meeting with the United Arab Emirates, UAE, Undersecretary of Foreign Trade and Industry in the Ministry of Economy, His Excellency Abdullah Al Saleh. The meeting was held after the Ministry of Tourism's participation in the recent Arabian travel market held in Dubai. As part of the partnership, Dubai is to offer support for meetings, incentives, conventions and exhibitions, MICE, market development, as well as logistics and technology. Jamaica will reciprocate in terms of resilience and sustainability, the building out of human capital programs, product development and marketing. Another key area of collaboration will be in cruise tourism. There are also plans to explore the establishment of a Jamaican-based Global Tourism Resilience and Crisis Management Center in the UAE. Minister Bartlett says discussions are to be formalized in a memorandum of understanding when both countries meet at the United Nations Climate Change Conference, COP28, this November. A non-binding memorandum of understanding has been signed that will see $7 million being pumped into the conservation of the Palisados Protected Area and Ramsar site in Port Royal. The National Environment and Planning Agency signed the MOU with the Jamaica Public Service Company and JPS Foundation, which have adopted the plot located along the Palisados Tombolo. The company and foundation are the first adopters on the NEPA's Adopt a Mangrove program, which was officially launched on February 2 in recognition of World Wetlands Day. As part of the adoption, $7 million in funding support will be provided over a five-year period. We have made a commitment at JPS um, to not only be conscious and play our part in environmental protection, but to actually lead and this is why we are we're particularly pleased um, when the initiative Adopt a Mangrove was announced. Through the Adopt a Mangrove program, NEPA is also seeking to leverage additional financial support for the management of other protected areas. In line with that, the agency's chief executive officer, Peter Knight, is encouraging more private sector entities to invest in biodiversity as part of their corporate social responsibility which will support the ecosystem conservation and restoration programs th that are already embedded within NEPA, within the programs with the aim to protect and restore our wetlands as we seek to sustain and enhance their ecological values and functions. Government is aiming to feed over 180,000 students this year under the school feeding program. This includes children attending early childhood institutions and brain builders centers, infants up to grade 3 at the primary level, primary and junior high students up to grade 9, secondary schools and wards of the state. Education Minister Favor Williams gave the update during her recent sectoral debate presentation in Parliament. 
She reveals that almost $9 billion has been provided for the school feeding program in the 2023-2024 fiscal year, representing a $2 billion increase over the prior year. There has also been an increase in the rates given to the schools at all levels. Nutrition Products Limited NPL will continue to provide the breakfast or snack component of the program. The number of feeding days for the academic year will remain 190, which is the number of school days in the academic year. Minister Williams is reminding school officials that funds are distributed to offer cooked lunches for children on the assumption that once meals are made in sufficient quantities, the schools will benefit from economies of scale. I know I've heard many comments about the amount per child. However, when you look at the quantum that the government is providing, it's almost $9 billion for our school feeding program. And this represents, in this fiscal year, an increase of $2 billion. She adds that meals for PATH students should not be offered at a profit margin and should not be priced in line with standard lunch prices. And finally, the St. James Chapter of the Lay Magistrates Association of Jamaica, LMAJ, is taking steps to expand the reach of justices of the peace in that parish. The new president of the LMAJ's St. James Chapter says it is the duty of the JPs to get to know residents in order to enact their roles. My mandate going forward is really to ensure that the name of the LMAJ is strong, it is known that the JPs who are members of the LMAJ who are out there in our communities, interacting with our community members, participating in events, making ourselves available to our community as much as possible. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching.